Okay, so anyway, back to it. Let me get back to where I was reading. Uh, the pain caused by the insect, insect sting is purported to be greater than any of any other... than that of any other hypo... Hy, hymenopterin. Hymenopterin. And is ranked as the most painful according to the Schmidt pain, Sting Pain Index, given a 4 plus rating. Above the tarantula hawk wasp. It is described as causing waves of burning, throbbing, all-consuming pain that continues unabated for up to 24 hours. It is thought that the ant has evolved this way to ward off any predators who would normally unearth them. A paralyzing neurotoxic, neurotoxic peptide isolated from the venom in is hon, honor, Ponerotoxin. Toxin. Ponera toxin. It affects voltage-dependent sodium ions channels and blocks the synaptic transmission in the insect central nervous system. It is being investigated for possible medical applications. The Cetior Mo, people of Brazil, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, because actually when I went to their page, it was like it had, um, um, accents, so I don't, I don't know how that's pronounced off the top of my head. People of Brazil use intentional bullet ant stings as part of their initiation rite to become a warrior. Now this is where it fucking gets interesting, and this is why I decided to fucking share this shit. Uh, the ants are first rendered unconscious. By submerging them in a natural sedative, sedative, and then hundreds of them are woven into a glove made out of leaves, which re resembles a large oven mitt, stinger facing inward. When the ants regain consciousness, a boy slips the glove onto his hand. The goal of this initiation rite is to keep the glove on for a full ten minutes. When finished, the boy's hand and part of his arm are temporarily paralyzed because of the ant venom, and he may shake uncontrollably for days. The only protection provided is a coating of charcoal on the hands, supposedly to confuse the ants and inhibit their stinging. To fully complete the initiation, however, the boys must go through the ordeal a total of, get this, 20 times over the course of several months or even years. 20 fucking times, are you serious? And boys? Damn. That's like some... These motherfuckers better be hairy as fuck, too. That's like even worse than drinking some hard liquor and put some hair on your chest, son. Damn. So... Uh, and that's, this, and then it gets, like, boring from there, but I'll go ahead and read all this shit. Uh, nest distribution. Colonies consist of several hundred individuals and are usually situated at the bases of trees. Workers forage ab arborally, ar arbor, arborally, I want to, in the area directly above the nest for small anthropods and nectar. Often as far as the upper canopy, little foraging occurs on the forest floor. Nectar carried between the mandibles is the most common food that is taken back to the nest by foragers. Uh, two studies in Costa Rica and Barro, Colorado Island, uh, Panama, found that there are approximately four bullet ant nests per hectare of forest. On BCI, the nests were found under 70 species of trees, 60, six species of shrub, two species of liana, and one species of palm. Nests were most common beneath the canopies of far, far, Faramia occidentalis and Trichelia uh, tuberculata. But these trees are also the most abundant in the forest. Nests were present more frequently than would be expected based on the abundance of trees under Alcis, uh, Blackiana, and shit, Tabernay Montana, Tabernay, Mon Tabernay, Tabernay Montana, Arborea, Virola, 
Sebafira and Guaria Guidonia and Osicarpus Mapura Mapura. The large number of nest plants suggests that there is little active selection of nest sites by bullet ants. Small shrubs, however, are underutilized, probably because they do not provide access to the forest canopy. The study on the BCI concluded that trees with buttresses and extra floral nectaries may be selected for by bullet ants. Uh, there's only like one more section now, I guess. The small forward fly, uh, Apocephalus paraponera, named Paraponere, is a parasite of injured workers of P. clavata, of which there is a constant supply because there are frequent aggressive encounters between neighboring colonies resulting in maimed workers. They are able to parasitize uh, healthy ants if they are artificially restrained, but this is thought to be rare in practice as healthy ants are agile and able to repair the fl repel the flies. Both male and female flies are attracted by scent of injured ants and the females to lay eggs as well as feed and the males to feed and possibly mate with the females. The flies are attracted to a crushed ant within two or three minutes and ten or more flies may be attracted to each ant. Uh, each ant can harbor 20 fly larvae. Uh, Carl Rettenmeyer Meyer, observed P. clavata actively trying to attack a paraponere uh, when they approach the entrance to their nest. But other authors have, have, observed, have not observed similar behavior. Uh, that's everything. If you want to look up that ant, just, you know, look up bullet ant or something. It's a fucking... Fucking bees make me run like a little sissy? Damn, I don't even want to try to... Well, at least that's staying in South America, man. Shit, uh, although I wouldn't mind going down there to visit. Not Maybe not the ants, but... I would not mind going down there to visit. Actually... Let's wait until YouTube gets those, uh, insect stings as a challenge. You think some people will be up for that? <laughs> That would be some sick fuck shit. Like, you really gotta have some fucking... I don't know if I'd have the balls to do that shit. I got stung in the ear once by a bee. Um... And that shit was no damn joke. I mean, it hurt... I mean, I was a shorty, so everything was gonna hurt anyway at that age. And I'm a sissy when it comes to that shit anyway. Um, I've gotten bitten by... Everybody's gotten bitten by fucking insects. You just don't want that shit to hurt. Uh, sometimes it does hurt, though. Um, but I got stung in the fucking ear by a bee. Uh, the fucking ear. Um. And my ear was, like, swollen for, like, a week. Like, fucking big and swole, like, half the size of my head type shit. Um. And it was hard to hear out of it for a few days until the swelling went down. Um, but I knew it, it fucking hurt for, like, a day, too. At least I think I do. It, and uh, maybe it hurt for, like, an hour or two. And then it was just sore as shit because it was all, like, swollen and everything. But that shit, I just run like a sissy. I see a fucking baby bee that has no wings that's, like, half dead. I'm gonna fucking run. Or I'm gonna kill it. Dang it, and we were making good kill there. We are here to make sure people like you are caught and tried. I think that's it for, uh, time being, and... So that's going to be coming to a conclusion here in a moment for this episode of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. Um, we'll see what's up next or something. Um, glad to be making progress on this, though. And that's always amazing. It's always awesome stuff. So I'll see you. Yeah.